Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 441. Besides cholesterol, these are the factors leading to heart disease. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone? the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of tea replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So you have concerns about people having issues that they don't know they have, that they don't recognize they have, and that doctors aren't traditionally trained to be aware of, to to warn people about, to guide people with regards to... In regard to to heart disease. In regards to heart disease. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this. So it's since medicine is very complicated, I realize we're trying to simplify it when we speak, and doctors have to simplify it even more because they have a very short window of time to spend with you. So, So in their minds and in their speech with you, they have to limit their explanations or they'll never get through any kind of office visit. Especially if so, you have a seven minute window. Right, I know. It's just it's just not enough. So we don't we don't do it that way. But but basically if we're talking about heart disease, and we're talking about the risk of heart disease, not people who have already had a heart attack, not people who have already had a stroke, but people who don't know where they stand in terms of risk for heart disease. And um, we're talking about those folks. How do you know and what do you do about it? So in our practice, we do a full panel. We look at we look at blood sugar and three other ways to look at do you have diabetes? Because diabetes is a huge risk factor for heart disease. Okay, but can I interrupt you? Yes. Your practice is an anti aging specialty practice. Right that focuses on issues that people are likely to have as they age right. and how to avoid or cure those problems mm-hmm. so that they live longer, healthier lives. That's right. And that is in response to an argument that you make that traditional medical training and focus has been on acute care interventions mm-hmm. and that as we age, we need to move more to a chronic care concern. Chronic meaning long-term. Long-term condition. Mm-hmm. It evolves over time and gets worse over time. And it can get worse over time. But, but it chronic, doesn't have to. Chronic care, yeah. meaning treating you with either a medication or lifestyle changes or, or um, exercise or other programs that help you live longer with complete use of your life. So then there are factors that you monitor that right. you know right off the bat when they come in, these three, four, five, ten factors are things that I want to mm-hmm. find out about because they will directly contribute to what I'm able to accomplish if, if this person becomes my patient. And right. one of those factors is obesity. Right. You have concerns, not just vis- visual concerns of, oh, look at them, they look obese, mm-hmm. and they must be uncomfortable, they're mm-hmm. probably in pain, they probably have inflammation issues. They may have heart concerns. They usually so, have inflammation So you have issues. checklists that you go through mm-hmm. mentally, but you also have tests that you use and, and protocols mm-hmm. for talking to someone for whom obesity is a condition. Yes. So, so, so obesity is the probably the biggest risk factor for heart disease. So we'll start with that. So we say they're a walking heart attack. A walking, yeah, walking heart attack. Even if they have normal cholesterol because they have – because obesity, the more fat you gain – the more uh, inflammation you have in your body. So it increases inflammation. So we look at tests. We look at a body composition because some people look normal, but when you look at their body composition, they're all fat and they're no muscle. So you and, have a machine. That and I have a machine called that. the InBody that measures that every time they come in. Right. So I can tell if somebody has, has is skinny fat, which is skinny obese. So they're, they're just, they're just, fat and no muscle. That's not healthy. Or I can tell if somebody has a lot of muscle and they don't have as much fat as it looks like they have because they're muscular. Okay. So I, so I can get a body image, a body composition number and follow their fat percentage 
and follow them and make sure they get better because that's our goal is to decrease obesity because that helps them decrease inflammation, which will then in the end keep them from getting heart attacks. Right. They don't collect uh, plaque on the vessels if they don't have inflammation. So that's that's kind of the this leads to this leads to this. And, and you don't do that from a position of scolding or nagging. No, you that's, don't make them feel bad about themselves or guilty about themselves for having a weight issue. You say this is a health related problem. Let's tackle it. They in the usually best way know we can. that this is an issue. They've usually dealt with it. Yeah. In reality, they've gone they've gone through different diets that didn't work because. First of all, not every diet works for everybody. They may know, Kathy, but in our culture, there's an awful lot of fat shaming. And I just think it's important to oh, say right. when, I'm sorry. when a didn't... medical professional approaches you about your weight as a health concern, mm-hmm. that's not a fat shaming factor. No, I mean, we're looking at it as just like I'd look at low thyroid. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm looking at no. it like uh, well, this, I know is, that because... this is a <laughs> risk factor for, for something else. Yes. And I don't want you to be sick. And I don't want you to live a short life. And I do, or I don't want you to live a, a life of sitting in front of the television in a barca lounger. I want you to have a real life. And you don't want it to come to an abrupt end because they had a heart attack yeah. because they were obese. Because, because none of us wants to lose our, the life that we have, right. no matter what that life is. Yeah. So, so that's, yeah, it has nothing to do with fat shaming. It has to do with this is a big risk factor. And in America, people who are obese have lots of company. I mean, 50% of us are obese. Yeah. So... That's something I deal with every day, not in a shaming way, but in a way of we're going to work on this. This is something we have to we have to help you with and and help you change. And the parallel problem with obesity that's almost always combined is adult onset diabetes. Right. Because people who are obese, in a very high statistical correlation, mm-hmm. also have diabetes. And that has to do with the more fat you make and have on your body the more out of control your insulin is. When your insulin goes way up and way down, you get these surges of energy and then and then crashing, surges of energy and crashing all day. And the more that happens, the more you wear out your, your supply of insulin from the pancreas. And basically, you your blood sugar then just starts rising because you don't have enough uh, insulin. So that's why, that's the process of gaining weight and becoming diabetic. So the more you weight you gain, the closer you get to diabetes. I'm not saying that everyone who's diabetic is fat because they're not. Right. But everybody who's obese is becoming diabetic as they gain more weight. It's hard to maintain that. So if diabetes in itself, high blood sugar also increases plaque, also increases cholesterol. So it is not a good thing for your body. So to me, I had, a, I had a relative that used to call me and tell me that her blood sugar was 350, and it wasn't that wonderful. Well, normal is less than 99 fasting, and after, after food, it's, it can be up to 160, but she was 300 when she was fasting. Oh, wow. and, so, and she thought that was great because usually she's in her 600s, and that's, bad, that's a bad management. She should have had a realistic goal of getting her blood sugar down, then she probably would have lived longer and she would have lost weight and because she would have been trying to keep her blood sugar down. That's, it's, a, it's, it's a sign. I right. mean, it's one of the signs we look at. Are you in control? Is your diabetes in control? The more control you're in, the less likely you are to have heart disease. And there are better treatments now that do miraculous things that haven't existed more than four or five years. Yeah. There, there are new medicines Me- that you can Oral get medicines, injections, to help Trulicity, fight through that. Victoza, they actually help diabetics lose weight and not be diabetics anymore. I mean, we can back them up by back them up to a time when they didn't have abnormal blood sugars by getting them to a lower weight. So that takes them out of that hot, constant, high risk, constant building plaque on their blood vessels for heart disease. Right. So that's, that, that's how we're thinking. We're thinking, what can we do to decrease your risk of heart disease? Right. So um, one of the other things no one thinks about that I always think about is thyroid. When I, when I look at somebody's lab tests and I see that their T3, their thyroid, or their T4 is low, and I look at their um, lipids and see their LDLs high, that's low thyroid is a reason to have high lipids and it should be treated. 
So if you have a low thyroid, you need to get that treated before anybody ever talks to you about a statin or lowering your cholesterol. That should be the first thing that happens is you should be placed on either iodine or iodorol and thyroid or one or the other to try to get you to a normal state with your thyroid. That's very important. And that normal thyroid, not high thyroid, but normal thyroid is a decreases your risk of heart disease overall. It also helps you lose weight. So those that's the way it works. That's a mechanism. Um, we talked about inflammation because inflammation is it is what causes your uh, the fat in your blood to stick to the blood vessels and narrow them and give you atherosclerosis, which leads to heart disease and stroke, all vascular diseases. Uh -huh. So inflammation is the key. So keeping your teeth clean, going to the dentist every six months is important for lots more than just your pretty teeth. It is keeping you from having the inflammation in your mouth mm -hmm. and making sure you don't have cavities which cause inflammation or or need a root canal and that causes inflammation. So that's very important, but but staying healthy and Yeah, my dentist is always talking about gum disease. Yes. And and as you age your your gums will pull back away from your teeth mm -hmm. and then you'll get infections and that'll affect you. He, what he says and I, is mm -hmm. that good uh, dental hygiene mm -hmm. can add five years to your life. Because it's somewhat the same thing you're talking about, mm -hmm. it, the disease factors that then lead to like heart attacks mm -hmm. from infections in your mouth mm -hmm. are considerable. And our, our patients have less dental disease because they don't get so much, um, since you're, we're on testosterone, all, all of our patients are on mm -hmm. testosterone, that keeps their bones from, from dissolving, osteoporosis. Right. And from regressing, and it also keeps the gums. So it doesn't pull away. Yeah, from from yeah. pulling away, and, and it really does help the teeth. But you still have to maintain your teeth. Right. So, and that's to keep the inflammation away. We found out that in in pregnant people, that's where we first found this out. Inflammation caused uh, preterm labor. Well, we wow. sent people to the dentist, and then they didn't have as much preterm labor. Yeah. So we we learned this from that from that arena, and then we brought it into dental hygiene and heart disease. So that's very important. Something you can do, you probably should do. Um, smoking and drinking too much alcohol. Right. Everybody knows that that's a risk factor. It's really a risk factor. I mean, nicotine. Well, you tend to think of smoking as a risk for, for cancer. But, but it's also a risk, risk for heart attacks. For heart attacks. Yeah. It, it, that, it squeezes your blood vessels. So if you already have a vessel that has, has a plaque on it, it's squeezing it down so you don't get as much blood flowing through your blood vessels. And if you don't get the blood flow, you don't get the oxygen. Right. And then tissue dies. Yeah. So that's that's the end point. That's a heart attack. So I won't say much more about that because that's been talked about. Right. Now, um, low testosterone and low estrogen are two things that most people don't associate with prevention of heart disease, but they do prevent heart disease. Testosterone does it by making your heart healthier, making right. it stronger as a muscle, but it also helps dilate blood vessels. It also decreases um, lipids and inflammation. So testosterone, getting your testosterone to a normal level with bioidentical testosterone really does help save you from heart disease in the future. So when you're younger and your body makes testosterone, you don't, you're not as at risk for these concerns. Right. But as you age and your body stops making testosterone, mm -hmm then that increases your level of risk for all factors. Sometimes that's the first trigger of everything else, gaining weight, insulin resistance, diabetes. And you've always told me in, in connection with these other list items, you've always told me that after a certain age, you can't build muscle without testosterone. testosterone. And so people and they become 60, more sedentary. 65. They become more sedentary. They're not able to build muscle. They tend to put on more fat. And they hurt themselves because their joints don't work as well because their muscles aren't strong. Right. So, so then they have a reason to sit. That also makes it worse. And, and one of the lists on here is the lack of exercise. Mm -hmm. So the combination of giving them testosterone so that they can build muscle structure and then getting the exercise so that they do helps them stay flexible mm -hmm. and mobile and strong. And we do. And we, we always have them uh, get on an exercise program as mm -hmm. well for many reasons. So, so when I look at somebody for, 
with these factors, I also look at their heredity. Did their parents have heart disease? Did they have strokes? Did, you know, because there's greater risk there. That increases your risk just genetically. Can't do anything about that one. But when I find somebody who has these risk factors, probably half our patients, mm -hmm. then I want to know not what their cholesterol is and what if their risk. I mean, you can't really go from risk to do you already have disease. Right. So I take a picture. I send them for a cardiac calcium scan, and it's a two-shot. I've had it twice. It, it, you just go, you roll into a CT scanner. Yes, it's radiation, but it's boop, boop, two little cuts. Not like, da, 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 like they do all of the different pictures for a real CT. They just look at two different cuts of your heart while your heart's beating. And then they look for calcium. There's calcium in that plaque. Calcium takes out of your gets taken out of your blood and and it's a marker so we can see the plaque in your heart and we can see the plaque in your aorta so they even diagnose aortic aneurysms by looking at this so we can see do you already have plaque a good time to do that is at 50 to see if you've already got plaque and most people who are plaque formers and have bad lifestyles or need to change something already have plaque at 50 mm -hmm. so then we can change their lifestyle so that plaque doesn't close off their vessels. Right. And sometimes, yes, sometimes they need statins. So another one of the signs, early warning signs of a plaque buildup is, for men especially, is ED. Yes. Erectile dysfunction. It is. So if they're not able to get or maintain good erections, mm -hmm. that's a, a good indication that they have some plaque problems somewhere. My, my thought process and how I deal with this is that a lot of men come to me with ED they, we treat them with testosterone, and then if the ED goes away completely, then I don't t send them for cardiac testing because that just tells me they just needed their testosterone to help dilate the blood vessels and, and get their nitric oxide going. Yeah. But if they still have some ED or all ED, then that's a vascular problem. That's a pretty easy, like, one, but, but two. But you don't just give them an erection drug. Because there are some drugs no. in the market. That I mean, help with I, that. I do give erection drugs, but that's not that's not my thought process. Is oh, there or may your, be something else. Yeah. My, I mean, yes, I want them to be happy and to have erections and have a sex life. So I will help them with that, but I also send them to see what their plaque right. level is. Yeah. And if their plaque level is high, I send them to a cardiologist and I change their lifestyle with them, and I work with them to lose weight and help them with diabetes and help them with inflammation and and uh, change their exercise program so that they can be healthier because a lot of times they can get better they can get their blood vessels to dilate more and to get more oxygen right and and this is something that doesn't have to progress and oftentimes the cardiologist will use statins but that's the proper use of statins not a statin right. just oh hi your cholesterol's high here take a statin that's the improper use of a statin because there's too many other factors that we can fix without the risks of statin the one thing i didn't say about statins which is really important is that uh, long term use of statins can cause alzheimers they oh. have statin alzheimers disease now because you don't get enough cholesterol to replace the, the vessels, in, or excuse me, to replace the, the uh, gray matter in your brain. Huh. So our brains are made of cholesterol. Yeah. So we can't keep our cholesterols too low. So oftentimes doing that gives you a brain problem instead of So, so very quickly, problem. There's, there's one more oh, item okay. on the list, mm -hmm. menopause, which... Yes. Yes. So menopause... The minute you hit menopause, you become insulin resistant. The minute you have no estrogen, no testosterone, no progesterone, your body becomes more sensitive to carbs. So the minute you eat a carb, you could probably eat donuts before. You can't eat donuts anymore without gaining a bunch of weight around your belly you can, and feeling bad and having too much insulin. So that sets you up. Most people that hit menopause have weight gain, their cholesterol goes up, their inflammation goes up, and they feel terrible. So that's when I see them, and, and, and that's a good time to see them because then I can start replacing their estradiol, which helps back up most of this, and then testosterone does the rest. Then we also look at lifestyle factors because you do have to be more careful about what you eat after menopause. Right. It, you can't just go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to eat whatever I did before. You still have to you, – you have to be like the rest of us who were careful our whole lives about what we ate because any kind of, any kind of carb would you know, add to our hips. So, so that's 
that to me is my role is to remind people yeah. of of the what they should do with themselves. They have to do part of it. I have to do part of it. I, I give them medication for uh, pre-diabetes, diabetes, help them lose weight. I mean, and then give them direction. So as an anti-aging specialist, you look at all of these issues. You're not just putting testosterone and estrogen in people and saying that that's a one-shot solution to every health issue you're going to have. I realize some people do that, but that's not the that's proper not what you way do. to do this. And that's not what the doctors that you're affiliated with in the age management mm -hmm. specialty medicines right do either that's true and and as we age we should become more aware that there's a whole field of medicine out there that's helping us age in healthier ways live longer functional lives so hopefully these things will help you have some things to talk to your doctor about or to track in your own life as concerns or as programs for living longer healthier lives it should also make you not worry so much about a cholesterol because yeah. I, I mean just an underlying anxiety is not good for you so if you have a high cholesterol, when you go in and you have a clear um, cardiac scan like I did, even with a high cholesterol, I noticed that I was I felt lighter. I didn't have to like worry about that, right? Because I didn't want to take the statin. Yeah. So so it, it, it we want to alleviate any kind of anxiety if you can go get those tests and they can be self referred in most places. The cardiac calcium scan is self pay. It's ninety nine bucks. So, At least in the Missouri area. And that's the Missouri yeah. area, and most places are, are coming to that. Yeah. But you can get one and find out if you have to worry or not. And that taking away worry is, is very important. Thanks for listening to us today. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.